Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. Hello to all the saints uh, in the congregation. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you for your faithful participation, and especially to the moderators in the chat room. Thank you for, for your help there. Uh, dealing with the trolls, welcoming the newcomers, and you're such a big help. We greatly appreciate it. If you're somebody that's uh, here for the first time, uh, I hope that this is a blessing to you. And maybe you want to join us every Wednesday night. And also, we have a Sunday program also for the Church of the Eternally Secure. Um, all right. Before we get started, let's take a moment and say who we are. Uh, Sister Renee, ladies first. Hey, guys. Hey, Nyanda, sister, happy to see you. Little sis, Celine, Stacy Ann, Hendrix. Who else we got over there? Let's see. Well, I know Jason's here. Uh, if I'm missing you, I'm so sorry. But uh, I'm Renee Rowland, channel with the same name, and contend for the gospel of the grace of God, which is the only way to salvation, and few are preaching. So that's basically what I do. I try to untwist twisted scriptures and minister grace to my family in Christ every day. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hopefully I just put a video out uh, asking people to join us. So hopefully we'll have some more of the viewers that you all know and uh, can uh, join you in chat. Okay. Thank you, sister. Yeah. If, if anybody here is not uh, familiar with sister Renee, I urge you to subscribe to her channel uh, you'll you'll find no other resource for uh, the, the true gospel, not only preaching the true gospel, but defending it against the, the false gospel teachers. Uh, all right, Brother Cripps, tell us about you. Yes, thanks, Brother Luke. I appreciate that. Um, uh, my name is Jason Cripps, and I'm part of a channel called True Story Live, and our uh, channel um, is devoted to standing in the gap between belief and unbelief. And we like to invite everyone to the table and be able to have a discussion with respect. Um, even where we disagree, uh, we don't like uh, bickering and throwing up other people under the bus and whatnot and, and trying to um, uh, talk about uh, life issues and how it relates to uh, living uh, with the Holy Spirit in your life and uh, without and the differences between those two things. So uh, we come on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you haven't heard it, I definitely invite you to come over and uh, check us out. Um, uh, before we move on, I just want to say that if you haven't listened to Renee's channel, please go and, and, and check her uh, channel out as well. And if this is your first time listening to uh, Sin City Preacher, there is a wealth of uh, videos uh, on just about any subject you can imagine on his channel as well. So uh, give them a listen too. Thanks. Thanks, Brother Luke. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm Brother Luke. Uh, Sin City Preacher is my channel. I'm, I'm hosting these programs. And uh, yeah, I hope you'll subscribe and check out all my playlists. It's a good resource, uh, very comprehensive on all kinds of theological subjects. Okay, um, now the study tonight is part of our series on the book of Romans. And if you have not been following along and you haven't been watching this from the beginning of chapter one, verse one, uh, I hope you will go back and watch it from the beginning. It is very, very important. It's one of the favorite books of the Bible one of the most important books of the Bible, but also one of the most dangerous books of the Bible, because there are a few things we find in it that could you could easily come to a horribly wrong conclusion if you're not careful. So uh, go back and watch it from the beginning. Uh, chapter nine, particularly, we finished uh, last week, and uh, chapter nine is important because Calvinists use chapter nine as the foundation for their uh, damnable philosophy. Um, but now we're on chapter 10, verse 11. But before we go on, verses 9 and 10 are relevant because I got a, I get a monthly magazine uh, from Grace Evangelical Society. It's called Grace in Focus. This is sent by uh, Bob Wilkin, who is the leader of GES. 
they have a lot of interesting articles in there, but I'm a little bit suspicious. Um, maybe I'm thinking too much of what we're doing, but uh, I've noticed that almost every month when this, their magazine comes out, it comes out and it's talking about exactly the same subjects that we're talking about in all of our programs. <laughs> I don't know. Is it a coincidence or uh, is the Lord leading all of us to talk, talk about these same things? But we just talked about uh, Romans all the way through verse 9 and 10 last week. And now this article here is about the book of Romans and particularly verse 9 and 10 and the whole philosophy of how to understand the book of Romans. So I hope you'll read the article, but I'm, I'm not entirely supportive of all their points of view here. But I'll, let me give you a couple of things that they say here that are uh, important to understand. Okay. The, the problem, of course, is Romans 9 and 10, because when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you know that a lot of people take that verse as, a, as a, um, enforcing a, a kind of a work for salvation. You've got to not only believe, but you've got to confess with your mouth. It's the same as you've got to go forward at the altar call, or you've got to repent of your sins, or you've got to call on the name of the Lord, or saying that there's something you've got to do besides simply believing. So those two verses, there's a lot of argument about it. We just discussed those two verses at the end of last week, so go back and get our take on it. But uh, Bob Wilkins' uh, point of view on this, uh, this book of Romans, he says the entire book of Romans is not about uh, our eternal salvation. He says the, the entire book is really about... Uh, um, temporal salvation, being safe from a war or bad health or whatever your problems are. Um, that's, that's the point of view he's taking, that that's really the point of the book. He says the only verses in the entire book of Romans that actually are about um, pers eternal salvation for the person is chapter 3, verse 21, through chapter 4, verse 25. He says, apart from those verses, the rest of the book of Romans is not about eternal salvation. You, he says, you need to understand it, that when it says saved or salvation, apart from that, these cases here, it's talking about being saved from problems. And we, how would I, we would define that? Because here's the conclusion. I, I Actually, the weird thing is, even though I think they're really wrong of uh, making this broad statement that you know it's not personal salvation anywhere except that little portion uh in our entire bible study on romans we we didn't take that point of view except in chapter nine we of course with the point of view it was that paul was quoting genesis exodus and jeremiah so he's talking about the nation of israel and so on rather than personal salvation but the rest of the book we've all considered it to be talking about eternal salvation but the distinction he's making is he says when it says justification and righteousness, you can you should conclude it's talking about personal salvation. But if it doesn't say justification and righteousness, but rather says salvation or saved, then you should take it to mean temporal salvation. You're being saved from a problem, and you're praying for the Lord to help you with the problem. So that's the point of view. And here are the conclusions. Um, he says, first, believe, uh, these are... The applications uh, to understand this uh, says, uh, first, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for your justification. Second, remain assured of your justification by continuing to believe the promise. Third, call upon the Lord every week in a solid Bible teaching church so that you and your family will be saved from sin's bondage and from the temporal wrath which it brings. And fourth, Help those who are seeking to establish their own righteousness to see that doing so is impossible and that the only way to be justified before God is by faith in Christ plus nothing else. Now, these four points in his conclusion, I don't disagree with any of that. I just disagree that only this small portion of the entire book is talking about personal salvation. The rest is all, it should all be understood that it's talking about being saved from a problem in your life. Okay, so Renee, um, uh, let me get your thoughts on that first. If you haven't read, you you get that magazine. Uh, you yeah. 
I do, it, and I totally disagree with them. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you can say all of Romans is about temporal salvation. Some of it is about uh, actual eternal salvation. And the, here's the issue. What I what I, I did a study on this because of this ridiculous argument. Uh, there was uh, Matthias is fighting against it, and uh, you know you don't have to physically speak his name or do the work of calling. Okay, people think this is a verbal vocalization someone has to do. That that's not the case. Paul always refers to things said in the Old Testament. So although he's writing in Greek. I go back to the Old Testament verses that say, call upon the name of the Lord, because I want to know what it means. When Paul says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, I want to know what it means. So I didn't look up the Greek. I went to the Hebrew because I knew he was referring to stuff in the Old Testament, as he always does. So what I find out is this. Why is my face not here? Is it not working? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I, I see your camera working fine and your audio. Okay. Yeah, you're on. Okay, good. So what it actually means in the Hebrew is to like invoke ownership. And when I was trying to explain it, uh, I was trying to say what what calling upon means is, you know, for salvation, if that's what you want to use it in a salvific sense, is to acknowledge Christ is the Lord. And that you are bought by him. So to call upon the name of the Lord means that you are his and then you acknowledge you are his. It doesn't have to be spoken. It's like to draw down. It's like to draw down the power of God. It is to embrace that Christ is the Lord. He's talking to Romans who are complete pagans. And so they have many lords and many gods. So he's telling them to call upon the name of the Lord to acknowledge Christ as Lord. So the ownership in the Old Testament, the word, let me look up the Hebrew word here, because I the Greek, although it can apply, it it's better to know what Paul's referring to, which is the Old Testament. I have several Old Testament verses that talk about calling upon the name of the Lord. So it's Likra Bashem Yahweh. Likro Bashem Yahweh. Yahweh is call upon the name of the Lord. And that was when Israel had to acknowledge that God owned them. So that's what it means to acknowledge that Christ is the Lord and that he owns you, that you're his. So it's not a somebody has to physically speak or cry out, but it is invoking that ownership. And drawing down the power of the Lord. Uh, so it, it is to believe. But that is the context of it. So I, we people can put to rest this ridiculous. You got to call out to be saved. You know, th this is this argument is just nitpicky, I think. What if yeah. you can't call out? What if, what if I know? What, what if, if you're, you're exactly? It's not a matter of speaking it out. All of Israel wasn't going, hey, God. You know what I mean? They weren't doing that. It was it was invoking his ownership upon you that he is the Lord, not one of many, but the Lord, and that he owns you. It's a that's 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 the implication of the yeah. Hebrew word used there. So his point is that uh, to to have justification and righteousness for eternal life. It's simply believing, right? And but, I calling, but to but to be saved from problems in your life, you're calling on the Lord. I don't disagree with that. You call Lord. no, I don't. I don't disagree with that, but I don't think that's what this verse is talking about. Yeah. But the um, but to to think that only uh, chapter three twenty five through through four something of this portion there is no. is the only part that's talking about personal salvation is taking this idea way way too far even though there, I think may be, so there may be some things in that book that is actually talking about being saved from a problem in your life yes I, you know i would not dispute that there, that's there but that's not the theme of the book as, as he's representing it it can mean to call upon him for assistance also but the that's not really the context paul's using it in 
I think he's using it like it was used in the Old Testament. So, but I, I think uh, Wilkin is is oversimplifying the Book of Romans. I don't think everything is about temporal or experiential salvation. Yeah, I think it's his effort to solve uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That portion of scriptures, how are you going to get around that? Because people could just argue that it's faith plus um, confessing. confessing with your mouth. And to get around that, he's, he's taking the position that no, all this is really all about, except for this little portion here, it's all really about being uh, being saved from. Well, I think if you, uh, you're going to confess it, if you believe it, I think it's just another way of saying you believe. You know, if, if I say this coffee cup's white, uh, I'm saying it because I believe it's white. So if I say Jesus Christ is Lord, it's because I believe it. Isn't confession the believing always comes first? Yeah, is yeah. It, I was, that's what I was going to say. Isn't confession a byproduct of belief? Right. So it's not the confessing that saves you. Right. No. But uh, but in this case, confession made unto salvation can be a, a, a temporal salvation, saved from a problem. Yeah. Saved uh, from. We believe God is going to deliver us. We're confessing that. Yeah, you I know? think that uh, we probably all agree that. Uh, we cannot impose confessing as to get saved, but we also would say it, it would be very, uh, it'd make you very uh, curious if someone is unwilling to say, to confess that they're a believer. Well, before. it answers that in verse 14. Okay, we'll go there. We're okay. going to go down to verse uh, uh, 11 now for the beginning of tonight's study. But I thought since, and I get this every month when I get their magazine, They've got an article in there that's about everything we've been talking about. I, right. don't, know. I, I don't think Wilkins following us, but it's, <laughs> it's, uncanny. it's uncanny how it, the magazine. Hey, he might be. I was invited to their, uh, They. I had an all expense paid invitation to his uh, GES conference. Yeah. Last year. He might be watching you. Might be watching me. Yeah, well, I was telling Brother Cripps about uh, about uh, Bob Wilkin and GES. He wasn't familiar with him before we went live. I don't agree with uh, everything they teach. Yeah, I, I do agree with some of the main things, and mm -hmm. and 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 of course, uh, but th there's other things that I don't agree with. But but regarding what's most important, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm in agreement. Yeah, faith alone. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go now to the uh, verses for tonight, and uh, beginning with verse eleven. Let me read verse 10 and then uh, go into 11. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Okay, uh, Renee? Sorry about it. I'm trying to get my stuff up in here. What does the scripture say? I love this line. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That's also in the Old Testament. That there, We're not ashamed because we're covered in God's righteousness. That's why. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. He's just saying that obviously the jew has no predominance over the greek we're all equal there is no jew or greek in the body of christ no male female no rich or poor bond or free we are all part of the same body uh and it's saying that of course we're not going to be ashamed uh because we're going to be standing before god wearing his own righteousness so we'll we'll never have to be ashamed or worried when we stand before God because in his eyes we have peace with him through our Lord Jesus Christ we have God's righteousness on us we have we shall not be ashamed because uh we believe on him and that is how we can stand before God and come boldly to the throne of grace all right thank you hey uh, brother Cripps Yep. Uh, hope maketh not ashamed, for the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. 
Um, so Paul's pretty big about this not being a shame thing. And I've thought about this kind of my whole life and like in, in having conversation with uh, people that don't believe. Um, you know, their idea is, you know, that believers are wrong and uh, we'll, we'll find out when it's all over. And I could have the same argument. I could say to someone that doesn't believe, yeah, we'll, we'll know in the end. When this life ends, we're going to know. And if you spent your whole life believing in God and you it ended up not being true, then you might be ashamed. But to me, this, this verse right here and other verses that talk about not being ashamed, um, also involve um, all of us finding out that our faith was indeed true. We, we cling to that here in this realm, and we believe in that. And to me, it's a promise that we're not going to be ashamed. When it's all said and done, we will not be ashamed. Um, I like what Renee said about uh, carrying the righteousness. We have the righteousness, so there's no need for us to be ashamed. Um, we don't have to even be ashamed of our sin. Uh, Jesus dealt with a sin problem, so we don't have to carry that shame around with us anywhere we go. We can rest in his righteousness, rest in the fact that what he did on the cross took care of the whole problem. We don't have to carry shame around with us. Verse, verse 11, verse 12, again, making the point that there's no difference between Jew and Greek. I, I don't understand how much more plain and simple it can be. There, there's, they're, they're the same. Uh, we're, we're one under Christ. If we have Christ in us, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, we're all one regardless of whether we're Jew or Greek. Um, I, like, I like the line, same Lord over all is rich, is rich unto all that call upon him. Everyone that calls upon him, he lavishes you with his grace. He lavishes you with his peace. He indwells you and fills you so that your cup runneth over. Um, that's the beauty of it. Um, verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, plain and simple. And I, I agree with what we've already said so far. This is not just the verb, verbalization of saying it. It's the belief. The belief rises up inside us and then causes a confession uh, when it comes to salvation. So, um, yeah, great start. Thank you. Okay. You got one verse ahead of us, but that's not. That's all right. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> okay. Sorry. That's all right. uh, let me, I'm going to read. Uh, that's called pulling a Renee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. You're rubbing off on me, Renee. Uh, I'm going to read those uh, verse 11 and 12 in the Amplified to see uh, how they are amplifying it. Uh, for the scripture says, whosoever, actually it says whoever, for the scripture says, whoever believes in him, Whoever, that is, whoever adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him will not be disappointed in his expectations. For there is no distinction between Jew and Gentile, for the same Lord is Lord over all of us, and he is abounding in riches, that is, blessings, for all who call on him in faith and prayer. Okay. Um, it seems to me that when it amplified says who all call on him in faith and prayer uh, probably is an agreement that uh, there, this is this portion is talking about calling for assistance like in prayer uh, to help save me from this problem. So it looks like they're in agreement on that particular thing there. But I, I, I want to first talk about Rain, what you said about the uh, there's no difference. Yeah, you expounded and said uh, not only. Jew and Gentile, but male or female, bond or free, uh, rich or poor. It's, you know, and uh, um, I, I want to add one other thing that you didn't say. And I noticed you made a video today. I didn't get to watch it yet, but it's about Nicola Taines or however the correct pronunciation is. So I'm going to watch it, but I, I have no clue what your point was on that video. But the way I've understood Nicola Taines from uh, studying Dr. Ruckman's uh, teaching on it, is the the Nicolaitans is a word for the clergy uh, compared to the laity that there's a they, they, that we there should not be a separation and an elevation of uh, a, a clergy class being above a, a laity class and um, so I, I would add that 
look, there's no difference just because someone is a pastor or some holding some office in the church and don't think that they're any better or any more loved or any better in any way than the lay, lay person. I just uh, explained that they were conquerors over people. They wanted to rule over them like a government. And uh, yeah, that's all yeah, I understood. And I didn't know much more about them. I said I thought they were kind of power hungry and possibly money hungry as well. But um, that I compared them to the Catholic Church. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Even though you didn't use the same words, the same point is that we should not have a clergy ruling over the laity. Maybe I should uh, maybe I should uh, uh, do a video explaining that clearer. I might do that. That helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Your, your point is correct, except that using the term clergy and uh, over power, be having power over the laity. That's the question. Um, okay. So now um, going back to the, um, the scriptures here. Um, um, for the scripture says, whoever believes in him. So uh, obviously all the whosoever verses are very important to me. And this is where the Calvinist because they don't understand Romans 9 uh, and they, they believe that it, God is hyper sovereign and controlling everything and we don't have a free will because that's what they think about Romans 9. What are they forced to do with all these other verses that say whosoever? They have to d redefine whosoever, like whosoever of the elect is what they would say. And the Bible says all. Well, that's all of the elect is talking about of the whole world. Well, that's just doesn't mean world. It just it just means the the uh, the that portion of the of the the world that was right there at that time, you know, the uh, that that part of the civilization, not the whole world, not all people. So they they have to redefine words that you know should not. I mean, even someone in uh, sixth grade understands all these words. Um, so whosoever has always been one of my favorite words uh, it means anybody without exception can be saved um, and then uh, now I guess um, let's go to uh, verse 13 uh, I'm going to read 13 and 14 together because 14 kind of explains 13 so I'll read that and then ask you Renee to to talk about it uh, 13 says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved how then sh shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher I'll stop there even though the 15 could be included but let's stop there so, Renee, based upon this, should we conclude that this is talking about temporal, uh, being saved temporally or eternal salvation? This portion. It sounds like the context is, is eternal salvation to me. Mm -hmm. To me, because if you go down, I mean, it seems like that's what they're talking about. I mean, I could be wrong, but. Well, yeah. Why do you need a preacher? And believe yeah, in, believe that's in, what I'm in, saying. In, and that, believer, that's what, the believer and the preacher in there. Tells me this is talking about preaching salvation and right. people to believe right. the gospel. It's not and about that, that. Seems to be the context to me. I think it's talking about eternal salvation, and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. I hope Matthias hears my answer to this because I've tried to explain it. I wasn't very good at it, um, but uh, to to call upon is to invoke the ownership of God over you. Uh, which requires you to believe that Jesus is the Lord. Uh, and that's all it means. It doesn't mean a public proclamation or it doesn't. It can mean a calling upon as in calling upon for assistance, which we can do after we're saved. Uh, but this is to invoke the ownership to uh, believe that Jesus is the Lord. So in a sense, the calling upon is still part of believing. It is to bring down the power of God. It is to pull down the truth that he is your Lord. Uh, so that's all that means. Then how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they invoke the ownership if they haven't believed that he is the Lord? How shall they believe in him of whom they haven't heard? 
And how shall they hear without a preacher? And that's why we're all doing what we do every day, even with the happy dance. Isn't that right, Luke? Isn't that what we're doing every day, preaching the good news? Amen. Praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brother Cripps. Okay, I love uh, the phrase Renee is using, invoke ownership. Um, that that ties it all in. That That's what it is about. And to me, it's also not temporal, but it is about salvation. The term saved isn't saved from a situation to me based on what 14 says. Because uh, as Brother Luke pointed out, believe. That's the, that, and, and Renee referred to it earlier. Um, believing, the confession comes from first believing. And then here's what we do as a byproduct of believing. We share it. So it's saying, uh, how can people hear it without a preacher? How, how are they going to come to believe without someone sharing it with them? And I know with most people I talk to that uh, have learned to rest in Christ's finished work, they want to tell other people about it. They want to. It's a desire in your heart. It just it it just wells up in you. Yeah, I literally have days where I'm so full of just just the realization of what Christ has done for me when I don't deserve it. Just his unbelievable grace, and I have that peace that passes all understanding. Even in a very, very difficult situation, the the, the things that happen because of a storm or uh, something difficult that we go through is seeing how God loves us and he lavishes, lavishes us with uh, his grace and peace. So when you feel that, what other choice do you have but to share it with other people? So the word preaching here, it isn't, it isn't just uh, opening your Bible and, and with a loudspeaker and just telling other people, you know, turn or burn. It's sharing what God has done for you in your life so that someone else maybe can see what's happening with you and they might be able to apply it to their own life and the Holy Spirit can work with them. Um, but the belief uh, turns into a, uh, a confession. Thanks, guys. Okay. Amen. Um, all right. I'll, I'll go to the Amplified before I give you my thoughts on this. But uh, verse 13, it says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord in prayer will be saved. They inserted in prayer. That's how they're amplifying or interpreting it. Uh, so they're saying calling on him in prayer. And if you back up when it talks about uh, earlier, they uh, put in the point that uh, uh, you will not be disappointed in his expectations. And, and uh, it says, for all who call on him in faith and prayer in verse 12, so I think the Amplified is taking the point of view that the uh, this calling on them is praying, and it's praying for a need to be met. But when we go to verse 14, it says, but how will people call on him in whom they have not believed? So uh, I think this is telling us that the, uh, well, um, it does you, it doesn't make sense for someone. Why would someone call on Jesus if they're not a believer? you got to be a believer. Why would you even think there's a need to call on Jesus or there has any value to call on Jesus in prayer, pray to Jesus. If you're not a believer, you wouldn't do that. You got to believe. And the, but how are you going to ever become a believer if you don't hear the gospel? And, and how will they hear without a preacher or a messenger? Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about one of Matthias's guests recently about this portion here. He says, and how will they preach unless they are commissioned and sent for that purpose? Just as it is, as it is written and forever remains written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, the, the good news of good things. Renee, beautiful feet you've got there. <laughs> Okay. I'm laughing, but you can't hear me because my mic's yeah. off. <laughs> okay. So uh, I think that uh, as I'm reading all this in context it, it, and putting this in my own words, I would say that it's saying if you want it, to, to call on the Lord in prayer for some, some need, um, yeah, you need to do it. You pray. And, and, and but, but why would you even pray to Jesus unless you believe? But you need to you need someone to tell you the gospel. So you need to hear it. 
hear, he need to hear the gospel. And so you got to send a preacher so they can hear the gospel. But here's the point of view that I heard uh, someone type with Matthias a, a week or two ago, and I, I had to leave. I, I can't tolerate listening to people like, like this, but this person was arguing that according to this verse, a person cannot be saved by reading the Bible that directly. They've got to hear the gospel from a preacher. They took this verse to mean you can't be saved unless you hear it from a preacher. Uh, I got saved when I read the Bible myself. I, the, Based the on my hearing and hearing by the word of God. It didn't say <laughs> hearing it or reading it. 3,000 people got saved at Pentecost by hearing it. But but the Ethiopian got saved reading Isaiah. Yeah, amen, amen. But this is my point of view, or the one to make here, is that this is a nut. This uh, this particular person, and Matthias entertains a lot of nuts. He has the patience to do it. I wouldn't do it. God but, bless him. I sure cannot. But I can't take it. I as can't. I, as I as I watch and listen to Matthias uh, deal with these people, I, I just get so disgusted listening to their heresy. I don't have the patience to deal with them, so I I, I, I can't tolerate it. But I think he has a special special gift in that. Sorry to interrupt you, brother Luke. I think he has a special gift in that area for that particular thing. He's well suited to be able to, as you as you said, to deal with the, the nut the nuts. Yes, yes he does. He, he really yeah. does. He's really yeah. cool and calm about it too. I get all worked up. My yeah. hair falls out. Yeah, that that's exactly what I've told him uh, directly many times. So I appreciate that quality. Uh, it's just that to me, I, my stomach gets turned. I don't. I can't. I can't put up with it. When people are are saying that the stupidest things like that, I, I just I don't have the patience to deal with them, unfortunately. So what I would do is. Uh, I'd plant or I'd water, then I'd leave. Okay, I'm not going to go on and on engaging with someone that like that. <clears throat> we'll leave leave that up to for Matthias's ministry. Um, You're a hit and run, Luke. You're hit and run. That's it. Yes, so yes, run I, by gospeling. Yeah. Uh, so uh, um, okay, we're through verse 15. Uh, any more thoughts than that before I go on on those verses? Either of you? Oh, did you did you talk about all the way through 15, Brother Cripps? I didn't say anything about 15. Well, all right. Would you like I, to? Yeah, well, I'd love to. Sure. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, so he's making the point from the end of verse 14. Um, uh, and how shall they preach except they be sent? Um, I think that there, this is for all of us though, but in this particular verse, he's talking about the people that, that make it a, a vocation, they're being sent. But in my mind, we're all being sent. And I think that God puts us into situations where he sends us certain people that even if we're not well-versed or even if we're a little bit shy, you, you're going to be sent a person that your particular um personality might be better suited to uh, talk to them about the gospel, talk to them about God. Um, this is this has happened to me throughout my entire life, even when I was in places where I wasn't talking about it openly. Um, I had a, I'm not going to go too long with this, but I, I worked, um, I drove one of those big earth movers, and I, every day I would listen to um, sermons on the radio. Uh, that was one of the things that I did. And someone overheard me listening to a sermon and he, he uh, stopped me after work and asked me why I listened to sermons. And I, w I was not in a, in a position at that time where I was sharing the gospel with anyone. And I, I feel ashamed of that. And, uh, but he, he asked me about it. So in that situation, I felt totally comfortable telling him exactly uh, what I believed and why I listened to the sermons. I'm only bringing that up to say that each of us, even if we're not called necessarily to be a quote unquote preacher, we are preaching by being able to share the gospel with others. And um, I love the end of this about how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. That's that thing I was talking about earlier when we uh, really focus on what he's done for us and we can be easily overwhelmed by that feeling and understanding, again, how much we don't deserve it, but yet he still gives it to us. How can we not share that with other people? Uh, yeah, and and so this is a blessing from him when we do share it, share it with others. Glad tidings of good things, wonderful things. Thank you.
Yes. Amen. Luke. Yes. This is why I lose my mind with the Ray Comforts and the people that destroy the gospel because the peace and the joy of that message is destroyed when they say you must stop sinning, repent of your sin. Cause now it's about their works instead of the wonderful message of Christ. That, that verse 15 about, uh, you know, preaching good, uh, good news and glad tidings in Isaiah. That, that's a, that's a shadow, a foreshadow, a prophecy of of the gospel of the grace of God. And I'm disgusted that 90%, more than 90% of YouTube, but most of them are blind, should not be teaching at all. There's no way God sent them and they're not preaching the gospel. And then you got most of the television evangelists. Then you got most of the churches. We got a guy in the chat room right here saying he can't find a real gospel church. How sad is that? You know, and that verse makes me think of that. It's destroyed. The peace and the joy of the glad tidings of the message is destroyed with these people. Makes me crazy. Well, I, whoever said that, uh, I want you to know that you have found a good gospel church. Right That's here. right, right here with us. Join us, right. join this congregation Wednesdays and on Sundays at 5 p.m. Yeah. Eastern. We have our church yeah. service. And many people have said, we, we do not have a local congregation that, that is teaching the true gospel. And they rely on us. And, and uh, so we are trying to fill that need yeah. through this yeah. technology. Amen, Luke. The church you know is the people. You know, one last thing I'll say about uh, Matthias and the people he deals with uh, b b before I go on. Uh, uh, some of you know uh, that I, I was a street preacher for years, and I, uh, I had all kinds of interactions with large groups of people, sometimes preaching to hundreds or thousands at a time, and sometimes dialoguing with an individual. And you can see on my channel, a playlist, Street Preaching, and you can see some of that, and you can see a case where I'm dialoguing with an individual. But when you're when you're talking with an individual, the reason I valued that was not even not so much for the one individual, but because I use an amplification system. So the conversation was being amplified to the whole audience. There may be 50 or 100 or 200 people around listening, or at least close enough to hear, and uh, they could hear this dialogue. So whether the one individual we're talking to has any value as far as persuading them or planting seeds or watering or, or anything, um, there's many people listening. And that was my objection to the other three preachers, which um, if you know much about that, that, um, that group, I guess I, for lack of a better word, the group of people who go out and preach in the streets, and probably 95 to 98 percent of them are preaching a works salvation message. Uh, I, I, so I would be there preaching in my spot and there'd be the other preacher speak preaching in their spot. And people would hear this her heresy of working and repenting. They're like, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, repent. And then it's like I'm they come down to me and they're hearing the Paul's message. Works are, no, are not the means of salvation. Don't put any faith in your works. Just rely on Jesus entirely. And uh, it's, it's, it was, it's a breath of fresh air when they go through that. It's like going through a gauntlet of being insulted and attacked and abused verbally by people who say they're Christians. And then people come in the whole atmosphere when they got to our section, then they would comment, wow, you guys are nothing like those people over there. I was afraid I was going to get beat up more. And, and you guys, your message is a lot different than theirs. I said, well, that we're getting the message from the Bible. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, even though um, Matthias may have no progress at all with an individual he's talking to, but there's a lot of people who will be watching uh, the live program and, and, the, uh, and the, the, the upload. And, and maybe those people will have ears to hear. Okay. Now, let me go to the next verse. Uh, now we're at verse... Um, 16 
but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Well, uh, let me stop there. I don't want to go too far. So verse 16, 17, and 18, Renee. Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't get to the clicker. <clears throat> so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's saying that uh, faith comes by hearing the gospel. Hey, could you go back to verse uh, 16? That you, you don't want to miss that. Oh, yeah. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. I'm so sick of people thinking obeyed the gospel has something to do with their works. It makes me crazy. Paul talks earlier to the Galatians. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? It's the same thing as obeying the gospel. It means to stand firm in the doctrine of Christ. That he died and was buried. He rose again on the third day. And he purged our sins. And because of him, we have eternal life. That is obeying the truth. But they haven't obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Not many, apparently. Because they'll hear it and then they want to mix something they're doing with it. They can't just believe it. And then if you just believe it, they mock you for believing it and say it's easy believism, uh, which means they don't believe the gospel, which means they're lost, which means it explains why they don't understand the rest of the Bible. So then, then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's uh, God's word that convicts people of uh, convinces people of who Jesus is and what he's accomplished. Uh, and then when we hear that message, uh, the faith is stirred up, but we have to hear the word of God. We have to hear the news of who Jesus is. And somebody, you know, like it talks about in, in this context, talking about people preaching, but uh, it could also be shown like it was with um, the eunuch and Philip, Philip, they're reading the word of God there. So um, whichever way it comes by verbally receiving it audibly or or reading it, faith comes through the word of God. It cuts quicker. It's better than any argument we can have. Just giving a scripture is the best thing we can do to uh, get, get somebody's face stirred up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Brother Cripps. Amen. Amen to what Renee said. Absolutely. So verse 16, um, I, I agree. How many people have heard the report or believed the, believed the report? Um, not many. We know that the amount of people that really, really believe it and accept uh, his free gift and really, really um, rest in him and uh, don't add anything to it. Don't add anything to it. It seems like it's simple to understand that we bring nothing to the table. It's all based on what he did and nothing else. Uh, so verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing. We hear first, so that's how faith uh, comes. We hear about it, whether it's someone telling us or whether we're reading it and we're hearing it from, from the page, uh, hearing by the word of God. That's the mechanism that it, that it uh, comes by. The word of God is also spoken one to another we uh, again it's the sharing part as well um just just as good as anything else um but i say have not they heard yes really their sound went okay so this is the part i wanted to focus on this is from psalms i don't remember the uh, the exact chapter and verse but uh the, the their line has gone out through all the earth and the word their words to the end of the world the ends of the world um, so another Old Testament uh, scripture that Paul's bringing up here. Uh, so the, his, the, the word of Jesus, the story of Jesus was spread all over. There's not many people, as far as I know, and uh, there may be some tribes somewhere that have never heard the name Jesus. But most people, whether they love him or don't love him, or they love him or hate him, they know his name. They understand they have some concept of who he is. 
Uh, so it's gone out all over and it will continue to do so that everyone has a chance that no one has an excuse. Um, we don't have an excuse. We've all heard it. So all we have to do when we hear it is believe it. Uh, it doesn't seem that difficult to understand to me. Uh, thanks. Okay. Um, I want to talk about this uh, obeying the gospel. Renee, of course, you did tell um, obeying the gospel is not to do, uh, you better do some kind of work. You got to obey the commandments. That's why people, you better obey the law. <laughs> this is obeying the gospel. And the gospel is the good news that you can have eternal life from Jesus Christ as a free gift. The good news is that you do have eternal life right now because Jesus did it for you. And, and so um, that's the gospel. Be obeying that means that you're accepting that as, as the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing else needs to be said. That's obeying it. But we also know that people will use that verse to try to prop up the, the damnable uh, heresy of lordship, work salvation. They do the same kind of a thing with you got to uh, do the will of the Father. But when you go back and research what does actually the Bible say the will of the Father is, that's to believe on the Son. And you got to do follow the commandments of Jesus. And Jesus' commandment was to believe on him. Uh, so um, all these things, uh, when you when you study properly, it, you, you end up in the right place. But when you take something out of context, you're going to have a problem. There's a saying that, a text taken out of context is a pretext. And the, the Lordship heretics, many of them, they're actually very dishonest. They're not doing it accidentally and just because they're innocently deceived and don't know any better. Some of them are purposely pulling things out and trying to use a verse out of context. And, and it is a pretext. A pretext means that you have an idea in mind in advance and it's, it's, and it's deceptive. Uh, okay, uh, now that's obeying the gospel. Now, here's an interesting word. If, if Matthias is there or if someone else is in the chat room who, who knows uh, what I'm talking about here, uh, this is a Daniel verse, uh, Brother Daniel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Now, I know the idea of the report. There's another thing, uh, Daniel teaches that I think is really interesting and I, I believe he's probably correct the way he's teaching it but there's something else between a, a report and a, an account or something it's I, I think it also starts with letter R if you guys have been listening to Daniel you know how he how he teaches that what is it where he talks about when he refers to this first believed our report and there's there's another word and point he makes that so that believing the report is different than the other point he makes I, I i wish i could be more clear but i can't remember the other so the report is that the he, the reporting means that we're telling you what has happened oh i know it was it's, it's going to the old testament and and it's not the right word i'm using but a forecast okay there would be a forecast about this coming messiah and about now, it's a report reporting what he, he did come. So um, um, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Um, I'm going to go to the Amplified, see how that states it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I got to pull up the uh, Bible Gateway again because I accidentally, oh, there it is. I didn't delete. It was hidden somewhere. Okay. Okay. So in the Amplified, it says, but they did not all pay attention to the good news of salvation. Uh, that's talking about the, obeying the gospel. For Isaiah, Isaiah saith, Lord, who, hath, who has believed our report? Okay, so that's Isaiah. I got it backwards. The report is coming from Isaiah. So faith comes by hearing what is told and what is heard comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. Um, then go, uh, now when we go to verse 18, 
it's the amplified has it in uh, italics here, there, uh, 18 through 20. So I'm assuming that he's taking this portion from uh, Old Testament, probably from I, I, Elijah. I mean Isaiah. But let's uh, let me read it in the in the KJV first, verse 18. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. Wow. This reminds me here uh, what Paul was doing in, ver in chapter 9, talking about Israel and how God used Israel to, uh, to uh, uh, these individuals to create the nation. And, and, the, and the scriptures and the Messiah would come through this genealogy. And uh, so he's making the same point in, in, in verse 19, saying that uh, did not, but I say, did not Israel know? Just like when he said in, in chapter nine, he's talking about, well, what, did God fail or something? I mean, after all, the, from Israel, they should be the first to believe. The logical thing is the, uh, the people who should really believe in Jesus are the Jewish people because they've, they've been trained in the scriptures and they all through the old the scriptures, there's pictures and shadows and indications of this Savior and, and Jesus fulfilled all those, all those uh, scriptures. So it's logical we should assume that all of Israel should be saved, but almost a tiny little fraction of Israel believe. So it says, first Moses saith this. So Moses said it. Uh, and I think that goes back to Genesis, Exodus, uh, again, when we were in chapter 9. I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. Okay, uh, Brother Cripps, I'm going to surprise you. I'm asking you to go first before Renee this time. Okay, no problem. Um, so we're doing what? What verses do I need to cover? Not, uh, did we read the verses already? Because I already we did the ones above. Uh, I, I read some and and took my turn all the way through nineteen. Okay, through nineteen. So nineteen is yeah. the only one I didn't uh, comment on. Um, nineteen, but I say did not Israel know? So we're going back to that period of time. And uh, this, again, is taught to me, it's talking about the Gentiles and how God used them uh, to make Israel jealous, and rightly so, because, again, from above, Israel didn't listen. They didn't listen. And so uh, God then moved to the Gentiles and praised him for that. Otherwise, many of us would not even have a chance to be saved. Uh, but that's what he did. Uh, he's not finished with them. He's not finished with, it, with Israel by any stretch. Uh, and many will be uh, saved in the end, for sure. And they're still being saved. There are still people coming to a belief in Christ. Uh, but definitely move to the Gentiles. And um, in talking about a foolish nation, that that's us. That's everyone outside. Uh, and uh, fortunately, because of his grace, we're... Um, uh, included and grafted in, and uh, I couldn't be any more happy uh, about that. And and I, I want to go back to that's how it ties into the way that we feel about what he's done. That we want to share that with others. And I'm I'm so glad that I'm in that place now where before um, I, I I didn't want to I didn't want to share it unless someone asked me. I didn't want to impose my belief system on anyone else and I, I i still don't i still don't want to push people but we want to uh, take everything that he's done for us and share it with others thank you so renee uh verse 19 do, do you see in there what i uh, i see is that it's it's uh he's kind of flashing back to chapter 9 talking about um uh, israel again here uh, the, the nation of israel yeah, so I was just talking about how it's uh, given to the Gentiles. Um, let me look. 
But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I'll provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. Just like this, uh, when it talks about earlier, it is said in O.C., I will call them a people that are not my people. I'll call them beloved, which are not my beloved, or something like that, right? From the book of Hosea. It's earlier in the last chapter or something. Uh, yeah, he's just saying that uh, it, it, he's going to use the Gentiles to make the Jews jealous. That's what it looks like. Yeah, well, uh, the um, I think Paul... Uh, in chapter 9 and in this chapter, verse 19 here, it, it's still, um, he's not only upset and hurt that so few Jew of his brethren, the Jewish people, are believers, and, and puzzled. How in the world is it that, that now the Gentiles are believing, but the Jews who should, are naturals, it's natural for them to believe because they got... They had all the prophets. They had all the scriptures, all the prophecies. They should yeah. have known him when he came. Yeah. And yet a tiny little remnant of the Jewish people became believers. And, and even uh, even when he did come and there was apostles preaching that he had fulfilled them, they still didn't believe. Yeah. Amen. So, um, so I, I don't know. Maybe um, at the time of Paul and in the following centuries, um, maybe some individuals and in, in a few groups of the Jewish people continued to be a remnant and, and uh, ended up believing. We, I know of a, a group called the Messianic Jewish Congregation, and I don't, I'm a little bit worried that they may not be exactly right because they're still holding on to their there are uh, Jewish traditions and rituals and stuff that they, they like to do. And, uh, but uh, I, there's no harm, just like a Roman Catholic. If, if they want to go to the Roman Catholic church and, and, and they like the ritual, and the ceremony for some reason, as long as they don't put faith in those things, they're okay. But um, that's, that was the thing that worried me about the Messianic Jewish congregation. I, I went there one time to check it out. And, uh, so there is a there are there are uh, some Jewish people that are still being saved even today, uh, but it's just amazing that it, well we we said in an earlier study, I think it was Sunday last Sunday or a week or two a week ago on Sunday, the question was why is it so few people end up believing the percentage is so low, uh, uh, after all eleven out of twelve. Of, apostles got saved but why is it only three out of a hundred human beings get saved that's that's my guess my guess estimate of, of the number but and i said there's a verse that says why and that is that to the jews the cross is a stumbling block because they as paul said in this uh in chapter nine, as we're finished up, the end of chapter nine, he's saying, he says, because they would not receive it by faith. They wanted to receive it by the law. So because they wanted to receive it by the law, and, and it says in chapter 10, verse three, that they're trying to establish their own righteousness. Because of that, the idea of the cross was a stumbling block. They couldn't get past this idea of the cross, solve the, their problem. And then, of course, the rest of the world, the 95% of the people that are Gentiles, problem for them is they're too philosophical and they're uh, they're uh, they think that the cry idea of the cross is foolishness we encounter that all the time don't we haven't we all encountered people like that that they kind of laugh at our, our faith and say come on that's like grow up absolutely you, you, the <laughs> idea of Jesus paying for your sins and that kind of thing and don't you think it's a little childish yeah you know, they yeah the imaginary guy in the sky yeah you know, that's another one i hear a lot believe in some some uh fairy in the sky or some imaginary dude okay okay brother cripps i'll give you a heads up i'm going to have you go first on verse 20. uh here i'll read it but is isaiah isaiah is very bold and saith i was found of them that sought me not i was made manifest unto them then ask not after me. 
Oh, that's an easy one, Brother Cripps. It is. It's right up right up the alley there. No problems. The automatic strike. <laughs> Ten pins knocked down. Boom. Uh, yeah. So, uh, again, this is the, the, we are those, those people that we didn't seek him out. Uh, we being the Gentile people, we're not his chosen people originally. Now, of course, this was a long time ago, but here it is. Uh, we didn't seek him out, and we believed him. And this, this, we see this throughout all of Scripture. It seemed like uh, people that were not of uh, uh, not Hebrews or not the Israeli people, they would hear, they would hear, and easily believe the gospel. Sometimes it, it was incredible. Um, so it, it was made manifest unto them that th they weren't asking after Christ. They weren't asking about him at all. In fact, it, it would have been silly to them to hear about it at, at certain points throughout history. But um, when Christ came and then people would hear or, or even uh, Christ himself speaking to someone, um, the uh, Roman centurion, um, uh, Lord, I believe, uh, help me overcome my unbelief. Um, you have someone that that uh, wouldn't by nature be seeking after him, but uh, I don't know, he might have heard about uh, the miracles and, and uh, heard about uh, what he'd been doing. And however it happened, he had a measure of belief. And I think that was, that was incredible uh, that God would offer it to all people rather than just his chosen people. Yeah, that was an easy one. Thanks, Brother Luke. <laughs> Your mic's not on. Luke, we can't hear you, bro. I'm sorry. I, I had a couple of things up and I got lost clicking. Oh, on okay. The okay, uh, okay, Renee, your turn on uh, what verse? Yeah. Is that? Verse 20, I think, isn't it? Yeah, but Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of, the, of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Again, he's talking about pagan nations, Gentile nations. Uh, they weren't seeking God, uh, and they they knew nothing of the true God. Uh, and so Isaiah is prophesying that God uh, says, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. So it's just saying that, uh, again, uh, instead of Israel, who, you know, he, the, his first, you know, his firstborn son uh, should have um, been seeking him and believing, but they didn't. And so now the Gentiles, he goes to the Gentiles. It's more of the same that's uh, above. Yes. Uh, now the wonderful thing about this is and this is this is not a one-time occurrence here as far as a prophecy god telling us the future mm -hmm. uh, there are hundreds of prophecies in the bible and god even says i forgot where it is and uh probably in exodus or one of the uh one of those books, I have, uh, it, it, God says that he will prove himself by telling us the future in advance as a sign to prove that you know this he is God and that uh, this is his word. And so throughout the Bible, we have all these clear, explicit prophecies about things that would happen decades, centuries, even a, a, a millennial, uh, millennium away. Uh, and it's all clearly spelled out. And here we have uh, this is Isaiah. Now, Isaiah was uh, 700 years before Jesus. Yep. So, so it's over 700 years earlier than Paul wrote this, that Paul is quoting Isaiah. And he says, I have been, this is from the Amplified, he says, I have been found by those who did not seek me. Now, that's Isaiah saying this 700 years earlier. It's a prophecy. Yep. And uh, for anybody who doesn't understand that, the Bible is the true word of God, and you don't have you don't know why you should have confidence that it is. The prophecies are there to give us this confidence. God tells us the future in advance. It's clear, it's explicit, it's undeniable. Tell him the future, and he's never wrong. So uh, you can it should give you confidence that, that you can the Bible is the truth. 
And so he's telling us here, Isaiah saying 700 years earlier, that I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. And this is clearly alluding to the fact that the Jewish people overall did not accept the Messiah, but the Gentile world did. And Christianity is considered to be a Gentile religion by the world today, not a Jewish religion. But it, it's ridiculous because we worship the same God. You know, it's we were grafted on to Israel, believing Israel. We were grafted onto them. Well, I would say that we and the Jewish people today do not worship the same God. No, no, I'm talking about the believing Jews of the church. It, yeah. They worship the true God. Yeah. And continued to worship the true God, the God of Israel, through Jesus Christ. And we were grafted into them. I'm yeah. not talking about modern Judaism. I'm talking about the God of the Old Testament is the God of the Jews back then. We're grafted into them. Uh, the believing Jews continued to worship him through Christ. And the unbelieving Jews, they've gone off into tradition and uh, the Talmud and, and Babylonian. Synagogue of Satan is what the Bible says. The Talmud is just nasty. It makes me sick, dude. I can't even read it. Some yeah. of the stuff they say I, about our Lord. Absolutely. Makes me disgusted. It's satanic. Uh, it it's is. Completely satanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, but, but there are people, now we know better, but there are people that think that we are all believing in the same God, like Allah. Oh, nope. Uh, Jehovah or Yahweh and, 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 uh, and the God of the Christianity, you know, uh, is, is all the same God, but we're, no. but we're not, uh, Allah is, uh, the moon God. Yes, he is. Um, comes uh, from Baal Allah, which is Baal of the old Testament. And, 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 and the Israel, they don't believe in the Godhead. And the Bible says, if you don't believe in the son, then you're not believing in the father. You That's know? right. That's right. So you have to believe in just the in the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all. Otherwise, believing only in the Father doesn't you no know good at all. And rabbis, if you look at rabbinical old rabbinical teachings, they know there's a, uh, at, at least two there. You, you can see it. They know there's a multiple in the Godhead based on the Old Testament. They'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. It's clear. I mean, uh, in the very first verse of the whole Bible shows us the plurality. Yeah, let us. Uh, mm -hmm. Genesis 1-1 one, one talks, mm -hmm. talks about uh, um, Elohim. Yeah. Well, Elohim is plural. Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, right there, they should understand. And, and as you said, Many of the Jewish scholars, they did even understand back then that they're somehow, they didn't understand the Trinity and the Godhead, but they could understand that even though the God is one, it's also plural somehow. Right. If, if it was just one, the word would be El. Yes. Yes. Elohim is plural. So there's either more than one God or there's a God. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now the, uh, the last verse of this chapter, uh, uh, Brother Cripps, I'll let you go first again. It says, but to Israel, he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Let me read that in the Amplified for you, brother. It says, but of Israel, he says, all day long I have stretched out my hands in compassion to a disobedient and obstinate people. Stiff-necked. Isn't that the term? <laughs> so you're stiff-necked stiff people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, so he, this is just saying, like, how long has God tried to get His people to accept Him and to to follow His uh, commandments and to uh, do what's right before the Lord? How long? Um, it'll be right up to the end. That's how long. And uh, He hasn't given up on him. But um, he uh, chose to uh, make salvation available to all men in Christ, all men and women, um, slave or free, rich or poor, fat or skinny, 
uh, of every color, of every uh, born in any region, all people, all people, all people, all people. What does all mean? All means all. That's all all means. Um, and and so the, he's just saying how long he has tried to gather his people back under him and everything that he's done. Um, I When I hear the, the things that were done in Israel and then it, how long did it take for the people to wish that they were back on slavery again? It, it wasn't very long after everything they'd seen and they're they're making idols already. And it was a constant problem. It's still a constant problem in not accepting Christ as the true Messiah. Um, it'll all come to an end, and uh, they'll, they'll get it eventually. Um, not all of them, but there will be a lot of them that do. Um, so he's going to continue to stretch his arms out in his compassion um, until Christ returns. So, praise God. Okay, thank you. All right, Sister Renee, the verse uh, 21. What do you say? All right. But to Israel, he saith, all day long, I've stretched forth my hands into a disobedient and gainsaying people. And just like and the verse that came to mind, just what Jason said. Oh, Israel, how I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. Behold, your uh, what is it? Your something is desolate. Your house is desolate. That's what he said. Behold, your house is become desolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because they they don't have Christ, and like you said, if they don't have Christ, they don't have the blessing of God on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I. You know, we we like to go till eleven p.m. Eastern time, and we're getting close. So, I, well, I, I'd like because the chapter's ending here. I'd like to start the next chapter next week, if that's yeah, all right. We will. I, I I want to mention verse one of eleven though, and connect it so kind of we we'll get everybody yeah. something here. In verse one, chapter eleven says, "Okay, first let me read the read these two verses together verse 21 of the last by the way there are no chapter divisions yeah i know and sometimes they really mess up rolling on a point don't they yeah. they cut it wrong yeah exactly. james does that there's a place where it divides verses and the verses should be together because it doesn't make sense if you don't yes. yeah um okay uh 10 21 says but no, first of all, 1020. He's, he's talking about the Gentiles now. He says, Isaiah, Isaiah say, is very bold and saith, I found of them that sought me not. That's you, Renee, me, the whole world, the non-Jewish people. Amen. That's who he's talking about, the Gentiles. He says, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. We weren't seeking and searching searching for the the the, uh, the promised one to, for Israel, the no, the, the Jews are naturals. They're the ones that should have been not only looking for him, but accepting him when he came, but they rejected him. Then verse 21 says, but to Israel, he saith, all day long I've stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. I would have uh, plucked, put my arms around you and feathers and wings around you, and, but you would not, as you said. Th that verse also came to my mind as we we're looking at this. And then we, we continue on to uh, <laughs> the... Uh, Next verse in the next chapter says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. I'm not even going to read the whole verse. I just want to make that one point. So Paul is, again, he's making the point here, 11 verse 1, that he made in the first few verses of chapter 9. That, hey, is 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 is. This gospel become like of none effect, or that is, you know, did God make his mistake? And the Israelites didn't believe in him. Did he mistake mistake using the Jewish people and that nation because they they're not even believing in him? Um, but now Paul is tying this point together with that that point he made back then, and he's saying, no, God forbid, it's uh, it's not that uh, he's cast the Jewish people away. He he still wants them to. To come to salvation even though uh they have to get grafted in we grafted in but now they've they rejected him but you'll see that they can get grafted back in just like us uh okay well let's take a uh, 
couple of minutes now. Uh, I got a couple of announcements to make, but first, before I do, let's uh, let's uh, give a summary on the uh, talk tonight. Uh, Renee, you look like you're ready to go. Go ahead. What a summary! What yes. you mean? Give, give us a synopsis of the study tonight. Yeah. Well, hey, how do you like that word so, synopsis? Yes, I do. Pretty, pretty works now, works huh? with my work, my my past yeah. work. Um, the the thing that, I, that really stuck for me is those that preach the gospel and calling upon the name of the Lord. I, I really wanted to address that, and I'm glad we did because it has become. I, I get very grieved. It's good for us to talk about these things, but when I see a four hour debate with tons of people on a panel debating whether somebody has to physically call out to be saved or confess, I mean, this it gets really crazy. So, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and salvation comes by simple faith in the finished work of Christ period. And, uh, you know, so these debates shouldn't even be put lumped in with part of it, part of the salvation message. And if something implies it's in addition to believing, then we need to figure out, what the real context or meaning is. And so I'm glad with, that we were able to address that. The rest of it just seems to be prophetic. And although Paul is grieved about his, the people he loves, his the nation he belongs to and loves are, are lost, um, uh, it seems to be a lot of prophecy, that he's confirming prophecy that Israel would be blinded and the Gentiles and, and salvation will be offered to all the rest of the nations. So. Uh, hey, be, be, well, never mind. I'll let Brother Cripps sum up first, and I want to respond to some, something going on in the chat room. Go ahead, Brother. Perfect. I'll, I'll be very brief. Um, the, the, the biggest thing out of these uh, for me is just belief, belief, belief. Um, that's where everything comes from. It's not just, it, it's not from what we say verbalizing it. Um, it's, it's the faith that we have in us and that belief that, that uh, is fostered in us and the gifts that God gives us when we realize what he's done for us, that gives us the boldness to be able to share that with, with others and not in a, uh, not in a Ray comfort kind of way, but in a, a Jason Cripps sort of way and, and just a compassionate, uh, humble, filled with humility and just that it's not about me. There's nothing in me that's desirable whatsoever without Christ. There just isn't. I'm not capable of doing good uh, at all or caring for others, honestly, without what uh, Christ has done in my heart and life. Um, with that, however, I, I have no, uh, there's no cap to the capacity in which I'm able to um, express love to others. And I feel that same capacity from people that aren't even blood relatives. And that's, that's w one huge lesson for me over the past couple of weeks. And, and um, I've taken it all in and just understanding that, that God does care for me and any gifts that come from anyone come from him. It comes from him supporting us, and uh, the the this the, these verses bear that out for me because obviously uh, in what I'm dealing with um, in my life. But the other point is that um, it's it's open and available to us all, despite what the Calvinists think or what anyone else thinks. It's available to us all, and uh, we all have that opportunity uh, opportunity to accept what he did and rest in his finished work. Thanks. All right, thank you. All right, before I sum up and uh, make a couple of announcements, I, I want to address a, a problem I see, and not only in this chat room, but but in in almost all the chat rooms on our programs and and, and talking doctrine. This is a recurring problem, and uh, I've seen it in the private uh, fellowship room too. Um, Sometimes people express uh, some kind of worry about their salvation. They're concerned that maybe maybe they're not really saved, or 
and and and, and they they they're worrying based upon feeling that maybe they have not either the faith is not strong enough or their or their goodness is not good enough and, but it, if you are somebody that it have is, has these worries you're worried about your salvation and renee made this comment and i'll and i'll say amen it perhaps you don't even understand the gospel and of course if you don't understand the gospel you can't be saved now is it possible for to understand the gospel and get saved and then later on get confused this is where i disagree with some that say no it's not possible for someone to become apostate uh, and, and it's not possible for someone to later develop some doubts and worries uh, i believe that it does happen particularly with a babe who does not have a great amount of knowledge of the scriptures and then they get in front of somebody who is who is uh, really knowledgeable but they are a lordship heretic let's say they go to a church and the pastor and others at the church have spent 20 30 years developing arguments for lordship salvation I told this to brother Leo he's a he's a boxing and self-defense coach I said brother Leo what chance would someone half your size with zero martial arts training have against you in a fight he says no chance they have no chance at all I say the chance for a babe in Christ against a lordship heretic with years of experience in the scriptures the babe has no chance they only know this much they don't know how to defend that, that that's why you need renee's channel she gives you all of the defenses that you so you need to focus on what she's telling you but it's very easy for a babe in christ to get deceived because they don't have the ability to argue to argue for for the free gospel the free gospel message uh, but all I'm, my conclusion is that if you have worries, then my, my question is, do you really understand the gospel? Because the gospel is the good news is that you don't have to worry. <laughs> it's not it's not based on anything about you. It's based upon the righteousness of Christ, not you. It's based upon the work of Christ, not yours. It's based upon the promises of Christ, not your faithfulness. And it's guaranteed. That's what you need. If you understand that, you should never have any worries or doubts at that point. But if you do, as as you, some are saying, and Renee has said, this the problem is you're focusing on yourself. Stop thinking about yourself and your failings. You got to think of the success of Jesus and the promise of Jesus. Okay. Um, uh, now, my summary for the study was uh, it was interesting as usual. Uh, um, I hope that if you do get this God, uh, this uh, grace uh, in focus, the great, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, the um, Grace, GES, Grace Evangelical Society, and uh, um, led by uh, Bob Wilkin. Uh, there's a lot of good things in those magazines, but you know they're not always right and. I don't know anybody that's always right, but uh, read it. It can't hurt to read it. And there's some good points in there. But uh, I think that uh, some of Romans is talking about praying for some assistance. And we could call that temporal praying to be saved from temporal problems. But uh, much of it is about personal salvation. But then part of it also is about the nation of Israel. And you have to be able to understand what each of these verses are talking about what it's referring to otherwise you can get that's why this is a dangerous book but it's one of the greatest one of the all-time favorites for most people uh, now I have a, two announcements to make uh, brother Jack Smack contacted me a couple of days ago and he was very distressed about a YouTube channel that is really nobody knows who he is I won't even mention his name right now uh, but he's he's been making videos against uh, Jack Smack and and Renee and he's mentioning me too i found but but mostly he's against renee and and uh jack smack and, and um jack smack wants to do a, a group discussion with renee and myself renee's agreed to do it too so the three of us are going to have a a group discussion on this particular person whether i'm sure that jack smack will want to name him i'm more concerned about addressing the the, the false teaching the individual is espousing rather than rather than the individual itself but we'll, we'll be doing that tomorrow night 
Normally, we don't uh, have program Thursday night, uh, but Jack Smack is is very bothered by this, and so I've agreed to. He, he doesn't have the ability to do a, a hangout, so I, I'm going to do it so that he has a means of expressing his his, his concerns about this. We'll do that tomorrow night at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Renee Jack Smack and myself. Also, some of you know uh, the YouTube channel Ultimate Mordecai. The uh, the owner of the channel is uh, Brother Michael, and uh, uh, I'm eager to interview him. Um, he, he was introduced to me, to me by Brother Leo Larson. So go to Ultimate Mordecai and subscribe and get to know him, but uh, I'll be interviewing him. And he can't do an interview Fridays because he works late. So we're going to have to do it on a Monday night. Uh, so either this coming Monday or the following Monday, I, I think we'll be able to do that interview with Ultimate Mordecai. And, uh, you know, uh, he really loves Renee and s supports her too. So uh, um, I, I'm hoping that he will be interested in, in becoming a, a, a part of our programs too. Or, so we'll see how that works out. <clears throat> Uh, all right. Anything else, uh, Brother Cripps, before we say good night? No, sir. Just, uh, say good night to the chat room. Sorry, I was. <laughs> um, uh, I was just trying to comfort our boy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Good night, uh, everyone in the chat room. And I hope that you all have a great week. It's been a pleasure as always, and I look forward to next week. And thank you, Brother Luke and Renee, as always, for letting me be a part of this. It's uh, it's really a blessing to me, and I'm humbled uh, every, every time we uh, go over uh, Scripture and just um, having conversations about it. It's just wonderful to me. It's uh, uh, something I really delight in. Thanks, guys. Okay. I, I love it. I learned something from Luke. How do you pronounce Nicola Nicolaitan? Nicolaitans. Nicolaitan. Nicolaitan. Okay. That's what I was trying to pronounce. I said wrong. So I'm going to take that down and tell them what you told me, Luke. And uh, so I learned something from you. Well, the, the different, the power differential is, is, is absolutely correct. It's just that you need to identify who has the power and try to impose it on, on who. The a clergy imposing their power on the laity. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. Was uh, there any other specific doctrine that they uh, imposed that we know no, of? Uh, I don't know of any others. That was the main thing that Dr. Ruckman uh, was taught on the subject of the Nicolaitan. And it said Jesus hated it. Yeah, because he doesn't want he, he doesn't want us. You know, as as it says, you know, there's Jesus. no Jew or Gentile. There's no male or female, and we should not have people right. worrying, worrying over other Christians. That's why the Pope and all that mess and, and levels like bishops and cardinals, that's all unbiblical. That's, all that's, of it. That's exactly what the Bible's talking against. That, 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 that obviously, that was the beginnings of it. And, and the, they saw the beginning, uh, even in the book of Revelation uh, at that time. And then it didn't take long after that. Look what happened after like the second, third century where we get this Monster huh. for Roman Catholic, Great. the beast. What a monster that thing is! Come out of her, my people. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, thanks for having me again, and uh, I I just like hearing Jason talk. <laughs> He's got such a great voice. I wonder if he can sing. <clears throat> I don't know. Can you sing, dude? Uh, I can sing. Yeah, I, I, I uh, like karaoke and stuff. I do uh, anyone with a lower register of voice. I can, I'm passable, but I can sing really well with other other people singing in a group. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the compliment, too. I, I appreciate yeah, that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So that's right, it. What time, what time is it tomorrow? Uh, nine, nine? 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay. So Jack's going to be on the phone. Yeah. Thanks, Mac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and, and exactly what's the topic? Is it Mr. Ben Redeem? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I looked at some of his videos uh, yesterday and to see what the problem is. And uh, 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 if you're not familiar, I'll, I'll point out the, the false things he's teaching, but he's also naming you and me and Jack Smack all the time. Oh, he's naming you too, huh? Yeah. 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 I heard he did two videos against me. I didn't even watch him. I have no idea what he's fussing about. I'm sure it's Grace. <laughs> well, he, 
he's an absolute nobody. He has almost no subscribers, and we're only going to be giving him attention. That's why I'd rather. I don't know why it. we're we're doing this. I don't understand. Well, only, only to Jack Smack. I'm just doing it as a favor to him to appease his him because he's so upset about it. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll be here. All right. Thanks. All right, God bless. Okay. Thanks to the congregation, and bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God, Jesus.